Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Exploring 3D Experience Works, where we uncover the tools um, that you can use in the 3D Experience Works portfolio. My name is John Marano, and I'm here joined by my co-host, Gian Khaleesi. We're both industry process consultants. Uh, and uh, Gian, we are both in the Waltham office here, of course, yeah. as you said. Right, in the studio. Yeah, we're in the studio right now. Two separate rooms, of yes, course. Yes, got to be two Being separate rooms. nice and but... COVID-friendly so we can take our masks off and you can actually see our faces. Yeah, we want to show you our smiling faces. We wish of we course. could see your smiling faces too, but, you know, we can't. Yeah, but... but, yeah, like you said, John, we're we're here uh, now once a month. We did this series last year as a webinar. Now we're a live stream. And, you know, sometimes it's just John and I running the show. Sometimes we have guests. But really just trying to be here virtually with all of our users out there and give you the tips and tricks and workflow d demonstrations, anything that we can do to help show you what's possible or make your life easier. You know, that's that's our goal with this whole presentation. Um, and speaking of virtual presence, uh, we just had a pretty big virtual event recently, didn't we, John? We absolutely did, Gian. I, I think it was it, it's some by the name of uh, 3D Experience World, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's so like, sure, that that's it. And that was what a what a fun time it was. I mean, definitely different. We miss seeing everybody in person, but so many so much great content, amazing presentations. And uh, I don't know, John, what, what do you think was your favorite presentation? We saw so many of them. I mean, there were so many, so it really is hard to pick a favorite. Uh, but you know, if I did have to pick a favorite, I would definitely say my favorite was the CSWE event uh, hosted by Mike Puckett and uh, they had really the cool. Uh, best aviation tugs. So, um, so best tugs. That was really great. As an aviator myself, um, and in general aviation, um, I I really could use one of those tugs. Um, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought it was a great. Uh, you know, and those two guys were super interesting as well. So, uh, but you know, what about you, Gian? What's your favorite session? Um, you know, there's. I'm tempted to say my own session, but I know that there were so many more that were a lot cooler. <laughs> um, I have to say, you know, I saw so many really great technical sessions, but the Duncan Wardle session uh, during during general session when Duncan Wardle, he was uh, the head of creativity at Disney for a while. Yes. He spoke for a while. That was just so cool, like to to really understand how how he gets out of his own mindset to to be creative and come up with with new ideas. So if you haven't checked out either of those events or if you didn't see 3d experience world at all go register for it all the events are still there you can still see them uh and yeah i mean why not you're only gonna you're only gonna get better at using solidworks or find some inspiring inspiring content um on there so definitely Absolutely. go check that out but yeah and you know what and gian you know we're interested in hearing from the rest of the audience too so i mean if you have a favorite world session yeah. why don't you go ahead and just Put in the chat and like when we break for questions next, we'll read out some of everybody's favorites. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, it looks like we already got some people in the chat here. Hey, Janie J and uh, Eric. Oh, that's a big name. Eric VD over here uh, <laughs> watching our stream. <laughs> um, yeah, great to see you all here. And we have an awesome presentation for planned for you today, all about design issues uh, with some of our Anovia functionality. So if you're new to this presentation, or new to this stream rather, then you're probably wondering what is 3D Experience Works? What is this thing that you're about to explore with us live for the next 45 minutes or so? Well, 3D Experience Works is a portfolio, like John said, of a bunch of different tools and products from SolidWorks, as well as other brands that are part of the Dassault Systems family that all kind of attack these different domains. So design and engineering, governance, simulation, manufacturing, you know, really trying to paint with broad strokes and, and provide um, a comprehensive set of solutions that can tackle just about any product development challenge. And speaking of product development, the, the process itself of product development in its most basic form we see as planning, developing, and releasing. So, you know, obviously SolidWorks is amazing at the middle section they're developing. So whether it be, you know, you're getting your first initial ideas into CAD or you're well, well through your design cycle and, and just making minor tweaks or prototyping, physical testing, SolidWorks is there with you every step of the way. But with 3D Experience Works, we have other brands and products that, that kind of trickle in and, and fill the rest of the gaps in that process to, to really try and tackle any challenge that you'll face. Today, though, we're going to be focusing on some of the functionality from the Anovia brand. Um, now, 
we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what Anovia is. So for those of you who are SolidWorks users, uh, either using 3D Experience SolidWorks or SolidWorks Desktop, you can take advantage of these tools uh, from Anovia with either of these. So with 3D Experience SolidWorks, um, you, you have the SolidWorks you know and love connected to the cloud. With desktop SOLIDWORKS, if you're already a desktop SOLIDWORKS user, you can still connect your existing desktop to the 3D Experience cloud using Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS. And for both of these products, as well as our cloud apps, but for both of these main products right here, you're also going to have Collaborative Industry Innovator. And that's the product that we really want to focus on today and how it how it helps us. So we're going to show a good amount of design in SOLIDWORKS, but we want to see how Collaborative Industry Innovator can help streamline your collaboration and really just make it easy for teams to work together towards their final product. And the Collaborative Industry Innovator is, is really the PDM and PLM, so product data management, product lifecycle management backbone on the 3D Experience platform. And it's it's a pretty big product. Like it has all of these, all 16 of these apps. Now, we definitely don't have enough time to cover all of these today. So we're gonna focus on issues. So that's just one piece of the puzzle here, but there is so much more that you can learn about that's included in this, um, which you can click the links in the description to learn more about at any time. And yeah, if you have any questions as we go through this, be sure to type them in the chat or, or leave us a comment. So we're gonna focus on just a few of those products. So to show you how you can um, store and manage all your design data in the cloud, give, it, give the proper write and read access to whoever needs it, as well as for people who might not necessarily have or need a CAD license, still the ability to access that data and analyze designs and document issues with or without a CAD license. So that's one of the beauties of Collaborative Industry Innovator is you still get to access the data and you know create markups and document issues without occupying a, solid, a seat of SolidWorks. So to show this today, we're gonna do we're going to be uh, using the Homaltro spreader as our subject. So for those of you who aren't familiar, you, know, you might've seen this, this model here um, before because it's uh, actually a model I think we've had for almost a decade now, that, which is just an amazing, an amazing uh, piece of data here, but really a more amazing product because this thing literally saves lives. So, you know, car crashes, really anything where you need to get somebody out of like a tight, a tight situation or a tight, uh, tight quarters where, you know, pressed sheet metal is, is, you know, really, I'm just thinking car accidents is, is where my mind goes, but opening that up and, and really it's, it's for saving lives. So we're going to see how we can uh, improve this design, uh, really focusing on that development state. And we're going to actually be role playing a little bit today. Oh, so we have, <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be doing a little bit of role play where I'm going to be playing Megan manager because I don't need a CAD license. You know, as Megan, as the manager, I just need to access the data and, and make sure that I can ins inspect it and document issues as I might see them. Um, whereas Eric, the engineer, he, he's the one that needs to actually get in there in CAD. Right, John? What, what's What's Eric's deal here? Yeah, so I mean, Eric, he is an engineer at heart. He's super passionate about his work and he's not really concerned. Like he doesn't like to concern himself with all the other stuff that doesn't involve designing, right? So this is what we will see as he goes through his workflow. He doesn't really have to do that um, because you know he's able to focus on the model and let all the governance and all of the task management and stuff just kind of blend in with his workflow seamlessly. And we'll, we'll take a good look at that. Uh, what do you say we just jump right into it now? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's All go right. into full screen so you guys can uh, really see what's going on here in SolidWorks. Absolutely, yeah. So Eric starts his day in 3D Experience SolidWorks and he's gonna go over to the 3D Experience pane here and he's a busy guy, but he's just gonna go to the top of his to-do list. It says model new rod end component and you can, he can see only these uh, tasks that are actually assigned to him. So he knows that this is all work that he has to do. So if he opens it up, he can get a description for what he needs to do. He needs to make a new component. He can move it into work to let everybody know that he's working on this. And there's already an attached deliverable. So all the data he needs to get started is right inside of this task, which he can open right into 3D Experience SolidWorks.
So after this loads, it's apparent that, you know, there is a lot of work to be done. So he could toggle to a custom display state. And this way, he can get a closer look. So it's important to note that even in this custom display state, that all of the mates are actually maintained so he can move around that assembly. Even though those physical components aren't actually shown, those mates are maintained. So we're going to go ahead and create a new part. It's very easy to start by selecting a sketch plane that we want to actually draw on, and we can begin a new sketch. So right away, Eric can jump into his favorite tools. So these are mouse gestures, and they're totally customizable to Eric's liking. And it's important to note that they change depending on which environment he's working in. If he's working in an assembly, he'll get a completely different set of mouse gestures. Same with drawings. But in this case, he's going to opt to use this center point slot, and he's going to begin to draw the sketch. It's just a rough napkin sketch. So as he toggles between his different sketch entities that he wants to use, or um, his sketch tools that he wants to use, you can go ahead and just get a rough outline, a rough shape of the top part of this component. From here, I'll go ahead and it's going to go ahead and just add a dimension. So you'll notice that there's a quick flash right there. And what all that what, is, what is that? just the actual dimension is just scaling everything else that he drew, which is super important. We don't want, if we didn't draw this at the right scale initially, it's fine. Now it's all to scale and we can continue adding those dimensions. So you'll notice as we add these dimensions, more and more of this is turning from blue to black, which just means that it's becoming fully defined. We have two circles here, but I only need to add one dimension because I could select both of them and this toolbar will come up and I have the option to select and make them equal to each other. And from this very same pop-up menu, seems how I'm done with this sketch, you can see it's entirely black. I can go ahead and I could hit the extrude command to bring this into 3D. So it's just a matter at this point of selecting the shapes that I want to actually extrude or the contours. And we can actually go ahead and specify the length of the extrude. And then I'll also choose an end condition. There are a lot of different options here. But for our purposes today, we want to maintain a mid-plane symmetry. So that way, half of the material is added on one side of the sketch and half the material is added on the other side. So now we can kind of twist our view a little bit. We got to add a couple fillets. Just a matter of clicking an edge here. It's pretty simple. Also get the chamfer option. We can update the radius of that fillet right in the graphics area and pick up that hidden edge without having to reorient our model. So we can also grab a different orientation by hitting the space bar and I can go to the top plane very easily where I could start another sketch. This time we want to create a cut that's going to be helpful um, to attach the links that will actuate the arms of the home outro. So it's very easy. Again, we're just going to get this um, all defined. And then we'll go ahead and make an extrude cut. Now, this is already 40 millimeters. It's actually saved in the dialog box from last time. So actually, all I need to do is hit the green check. And you could see that all of the material is now going to be removed 40 millimeters. But it's going to be tough to machine all the way down to that cut. So we'll add some fillets to help out with that. Again, updating that radius and selecting the hidden edge. So Eric's pretty happy with this top half. I think it's now time to focus on the actual shaft itself. So to do this, Eric, as we see, has the option to select not only planes, but faces, planar faces that we can then draw sketches on to then turn into extrudes. Wow, John, it looks like you barely ever leave the graphics area. Are you afraid of toolbars or something? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm not afraid of toolbars, but like <laughs> I'm kind of afraid of toolbars. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just so much easier just to keep your mouse right in the graphics area. And this is why all these little pop ups are really helpful and go a long way into really helping us uh, improve the design. And, you know, we're going to see one more example of that here. 
because when we actually extrude it, we actually go ahead and extrude this. That's all right. Little technical yeah. difficulties <laughs> never killed anyone. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, now, uh, while I get this set up real quick, uh, maybe we'll go ahead. Yeah, and I'm going to check the will... chat, John. Why don't you fix this up? I'm going to see. I'm going to just check out the chat and just take a couple questions for yeah. now. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we have a couple. Qu all right. So here's a good question. Um, yeah. So which which software is important? Uh, for the design department. So in this particular demonstration, we're using 3D Experience SolidWorks, but um, it, I mean, you know, if, if you're talking about CAD, then yes, that's gonna be uh, SolidWorks, you know, any, whichever version of SolidWorks you plan to use. Uh, but if you're talking about collaborative design, that's when products like Collaborative Industry Innovator uh, really shine in allowing you to you know, just work with others on your team and, and being able to point out issues. We haven't gotten that far just yet, but I'm sure we're going to get back on track in just another couple moments here. Um, yeah, we should be good to go back up and running. So whenever you're ready. All right. Yeah, well, let's do it, John. All, all right. right. Let's jump back, back on track. All right. So, yeah, as we could see in the graphics area here now, instead of actually um, changing the the diameter by typing it in we can actually just drag this to go ahead and update that and you see there's a little rule on the side we can just snap that right into the dimension hit the enter key and look at that there's another way to actually extrude we can easily add a chamfer nice but you know we already did that before but what's really cool here up next is the actual hole wizard itself because i want to um create create a nice um a nice um you know a specialty hole here so i want a countersink hole um so i'm going to use hole wizard we could model it but i'm i'm actually not going to model it so this is hole wizard so anytime you want to actually create you know custom holes um you can go ahead and do this right from right from here so counter bore countersink tapped holes things of that nature that you could model in SOLIDWORKS, right? But why not just use the library that's available to us? And in this case, I have the end condition of up to surface in there. So it's basically, I just want to tell SOLIDWORKS when I want this hole to actually end. And I just want it to last the entire length of the thread. So I could just easily select that top face right there. Oh, and it's gonna cut right up to the face. That's really yeah. handy. So you, so you said any of like your, your standard hole sizes and, and uh, like kind of denominations that you said, counter bores, counter sinks. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and I, it's also important to note that I could have like changed the size. I just kind of had those preloaded in there already with the size that I wanted. So the oh, last just... <laughs> thing I guess we really need to do, the last, last big change is just adding a, a, a spot for our retaining ring to go. And because we've already seen a lot of these features, we'll just kind of skip over them a little bit. And then it just revolve a simple revolve cut, and that is added. So some finishing touches. Well, we could add a couple chamfers here, you know, but we might find out a little bit later that Megan might not like chamfers, but we'll kind of circle back to that one a little bit later. But Eric's going to go ahead and add a material. So he has an entire material library, his fingertips. So not only does this change the way it actually looks, but it also changes the physical property. So if one of his colleagues wanted to go ahead and do a uh, structural simulation down the road to verify he could do that as well. So Eric will find the steel of his liking and he can go ahead and apply the settings. And look at that, it updates right away. But on second thought, look at this. I think it's a little bit, it looks a little a little bit long, long here, the top yeah. part. So should Eric be concerned, Gian, about about this affecting the downstream features? I hey, mean, I don't know. I'm I'm just Megan. I don't I don't touch CAD. That's your <laughs> <job>. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, well Eric's not gonna be concerned because all he has to do is click on a face here and he can just easily update the dimension change. And again, everything updates so he doesn't have to worry about affecting anything downstream. Wow, nothing broke. That's impressive, yeah. Eric. What was that? Said nothing broke. It's pretty impressive, Eric. <laughs> I know, nothing broke. 
So now he'll go ahead and save this. And he has a few different options when he um, presses save with options. So we'll name it new rod end. Um, you know, the first option that he has is to release the reservation after with after the save. And what that is, is, you know, if he wanted to allow his other colleagues to go ahead and use the data, he could do that as well. So he'll just go ahead and save the component but he doesn't want to check that box because, well, he's still working on the component. He's going to toggle into the window and watch as he drags and drops this into the assembly. I mean, that's pretty cool. It automatically adds a concentric mate. Oh, wow. And obviously, this isn't the right direction. So, well, it's no issue. He just hits, flips the mate around and press the green check. So, I mean, adding mates is just super simple. So if you wanted these two faces to touch, just select the two faces and add a coincident mate. It's really that simple. But obviously, uh, you know, I don't think this looks quite, you know, as uh, as where it needs to be, right? There's still some missing components. And yeah, at any time, Farrakh wanted around. to, you could just move it around hmm. and you could actually see how this would behave. And, you know, he's happy with that behavior. But yeah, we got a lot of work to do on this part still. But we won't be modeling any more parts. There is, however, the link that we need on the 3D Experience platform that's saved for us. So we'll go ahead into the 3D Experience pane, and I'm just going to literally search for the link that I need. I do get a, a decent amount of search options, but I, I suspect that this is the one. I suspect that this is the one that Eric needs. And if I wanted to verify that, I could actually just open up an interactive preview where I can actually manipulate the model to make 100% certain that this is the actual link that I need. And then I can insert it with a simple drag and drop. It's just a matter of adding the mates like we did before. So we're gonna fast forward through this one a little bit as well. But even so, there's still a pin. And because this isn't a full design demo, we have one in the other window, but watch as we drag and drop between all of these different holes. So we can really just choose which hole we wanna drop this pin in and it, is going to add the mate automatically. So it saves us an absolute ton of time. So just a concentric mate it added? Um, actually, it added the coincident mate as well um, that wow. you would need. So two mates in one, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's a nice time saver there. Absolutely. And you know what? Here's another plus, I guess, that we can, we can get out of this. So we need to actually have a, a retaining ring at the bottom of this pin. Right, yeah, you gotta keep so it So what Eric's actually gonna use is Toolbox, which is you know, fairly new to 3D Experience SolidWorks, so it's pretty cool. For those of you who aren't familiar with Toolbox, it's just a bunch of fasteners, like you can see O-rings, retaining rings, bolt screws, that you have access to. And it's cool enough that you, you know, have access to all of these tools or all of these fasteners, but what's even cooler is when Eric chooses the retaining ring that he actually wants. He could simply drag it over any of these cylindrical surfaces and it's automatically going to resize to fit the actual circumference of the circle that, that or diameter of this uh, circle that he's working with. So isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But that was that was just one pin, John. I think I see a couple more holes there. Yeah. Are you going to have to do this yeah. whole thing again? You know, I would think, you know, that might be an issue. But <laughs> here's the thing. All Eric has to do is just give it a simple window select. And again, he's gonna pull up his mouse gestures. As said, as we said before, it's they're gonna be completely different now. He's gonna use a copy with mates tool. And this copy with mates tool allows us to take all of both of those components and just select faces to place them where we want. So for example, Eric's gonna click a cylindrical face over there then I'll go ahead and click the top face and boom, puts it right into place. If you want to see that again, yeah. let's take a look at it. So we'll go ahead and hit the cylindrical face and then click the top face again. And I know what you're thinking, Gian. Yeah, those... They're just a little bit too long, right? Yep. I, I must have read your mind. Well, luckily, <laughs> it's just a matter of clicking the faces. And this particular pin has configurations. So we'll go ahead and just choose from the list of configurations to size them perfectly in a matter of seconds. And if we really want to look at it, we can even see like, hey, look at this. 
I mean, it. Would you agree, Gian? I think that resized it <laughs> perfectly. Yeah, it looks looks like that did the trick. It did the trick. But here's the here's the catch, though. A one arm homatro spreader is just not all that effective. Yeah, probably um, <laughs> not going to save too many lives with that. No. <laughs> yeah, you can't save too many lives with that. So, it's really just a matter of making a window select here, and then I'm going to use another one of my. Uh, favorite features here we're going to mirror all of those components by selecting one plane and look at that it wow. did all of that work that we just did in a matter of seconds and just copied it over to the other side and That's awesome. i know i mean it's if you're skeptical here it is like just it moves around too i mean it's so cool but wow. uh he you know he's pretty satisfied with his work at this point and he just wants to toggle back to the display state so you know he can update the assembly or update the the yeah update the assembly and you know megan can get a nice nice view so john does he have to like go search for this again and like add it to the task or something yeah that would be a pain wouldn't it but no he doesn't he doesn't have to do that it automatically updates so he simply has to drag it from in work into done and now Megan's going to get a notification and she'll see attached the updated model that Eric's been working on the entire time. So I see. Oh, so because it was already attached to the task, so you don't have to do anything. That's, that's pretty handy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess it's it's time for Megan to pick things back up, but I want to check the, the chat first. And John, I, I saw this comment come in. This is pretty funny. I guess when I uh, when I, I was messing with you about the toolbars, asking if you're afraid of them, Eric uh, decided to chime in and say, uh, John thinks toolbars are like those regions on ancient maps. Here be dragons. <laughs> yeah, John. He, he might be a little toolbar phobic, but that's okay. SolidWorks helps with that. SolidWorks, SolidWorks does help is with the that. cure for t for toolbar phobia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll put a new word in the dictionary for it. <laughs> yeah. I think we got. Um, let's see if we have any other questions right now. I saw one before um, that was asking about uh, Katia versus SolidWorks and if they're the same tool or different tools. Uh, so both SolidWorks and Katia are both brands that are a part of the same uh, DASO Systems family. And SolidWorks, we make CAD very much focused uh, on mechanical design. Katia has more of a focus uh, in aerospace and automotive, uh, but it's, you know, both of these products are in all kinds of industries. And though they are different tools, um, you know, there is some uh, interoperability with some of our newer products with them. And some of our cloud products actually work, our new cloud SolidWorks products, some of them actually work very well with uh, some of our newer cloud Katia uh, products. But yeah, definitely more to explore there. If you want to explore more about any of this, you can always go to solidworks.com slash 3D experience dash works or, or click any of the links in the description to learn more about that. Um, so I think that, John, do you, you see any other questions here? I'm not seeing uh, too many other questions, so I think at this point we'll be good to uh, jump back into it. You know, I'm, I'm really interested to uh, see what uh, what exactly Megan, you know, is is going to say about all that work that Eric just did. Yeah, let's 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 find out because, you know, I, I, you just you just worked hard. All right. Let's see what Megan thinks. She's working on a totally different project right now, but sees your notification come in and, and clicking on that just launches this uh, right on top of her workspace she was just working in and opens up the task app. And you can see I just opened up the attachment um, just by clicking on it. So you might notice I'm in an iPad right now using those touchscreen capabilities. So touching this, um, I can just open this up in any of these apps or more apps if I wanted to, if there was something else that wasn't in this list. But luckily, the app I actually want to open this up in is Product Explorer because that's going to allow me to just explore the structure of this product in a tree view, but simultaneously be able to uh, take a look at the, the uh, a graphical representation of the model as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click Product Explorer. And then by clicking that, it's going to launch Product Explorer again on top of this and, and open up the model in that app. And you'll see there's the graphical view on the right and the tree view on the left. And I, I need to find Eric's uh, component. So he could have told me the name of it or actually added the name 
or like the actual part he made in the deliverables. But since he added the assembly, uh, I can still just search within the product. And we did that on purpose so we could show you. I'm not going to badmouth Eric or anything. You know, he's, he's doing a great job. Uh, he could have made my life a little bit easier, but no worries. We can just search for this component now. We're going to find it in the context. Uh, so that's the button I'm going to click next um, to then just open up into a search. And I know it's new new rod end, something like that. I'm just going to type in end because uh, I'm sure that that'll be included in, in the name here. And that 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 worked. So I found that one. I, I'm clicking on it again so that now I'm just going to click on to focus on this. So I can just zoom in in the assembly and, and see where that is. And I can see the outline of it. It's a, it's a little bit difficult to, view, to, to see. So I can actually use the touch screen to move the model around a little bit and take a look. But I'm pretty sure that's the one we were looking for. So what I'm actually going to do is, is open this up in another app to get a closer look. I'm going to open it up in 3D Markup. So 3D Markup is, is another tool, um, you know, in Collaborative Industry Innovator that will allow anybody you know, with, with or without a CAD license to grab a model that they have access to and mark it up, you know, create like a slideshow kind of format. And when we first get in here, we're just, we're viewing the model, uh, but to actually start, uh, yeah, just using the touch screen, I can, I can zoom, I can pan, I can take a look around. I have a bunch of different tools down there for, for measuring and, and for marking it up. But to use those tools, I'm going to first have to just create a new markup. So I'm going to click this button right here to create that markup. And uh, I'm not even going to bother uh, changing the name. The name there, it's, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just go with that one and just add a description asking him to just, you know, fix anything in, those, in the highlighted areas. Um, and then, yeah, let's actually get into this markup and, and start showing how we, can, how we can document issues as they arise. So the first thing I see is uh, that shaft looks a little small um, and I measure it, it's 28. I know that needs to be 33 though. So I'm gonna actually add a note so that Eric knows, you know, this is gonna be changed to, to 33 now and I could t customize uh, the text on that too. Um, you know, I thought we would talked about that in an earlier meeting, Eric, but I guess, I guess you know, we, we all make mistakes. I guess I didn't get that memo. Must have, must have been sent over email or something. Oh, probably. Maybe I should have sent it to you through the platform. Then. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's cool. So we got that, that one issue that we want changed. Uh, we have that documented now. And, you know, I can add more slides as I'd like. So I'm just going to click that slide button to add another one. And then I can zoom in, you know, uh, Megan's just not a fan of the chamfers, you know, can we just do fillets here? Like, let's, let's keep it simple, you know, a uh, little particular, but you know, uh, Megan's not a fan of chamfers. So, all right, those are all the changes we want. Obviously we could have documented a lot more and really tore Eric's model apart here, but I think it's sufficing. So let's just get those two things changed quick. And now how I want to communicate this to Eric really depends on, on a couple things. So I could do this in two ways. I could either create an issue, which you see in that one button I just highlighted, or I could create a change action. And we're gonna be talking about issues today because we're in the development phase. The change actions are more geared toward a product that is released maybe currently on the market that, you're cre that you um, either need to create a change to that existing product on the market, or maybe you're creating a new revision for a different uh, version or configuration of the product, but it's really when a product is in the released state and you need a change, that's when you'd use a change action. But if the product is in development still, if it's still in work, then there's no reason not to just use an issue. And the, one of the great things about this is that anybody who has access to the design data and who also has the collaborative industry innovator, they can all raise issues. So not just managers, Eric could raise issues. Our other teammates in this uh, um, on this team could also raise issues. So I'm going to use an issue here. I'm going to jump into an issue, and I'm going to just leave the name. Um, my recommended resolution is to just update that shaft diameter and, and change that to fillets. I'm going to mark it urgent because I want to see Eric sweat a little bit. And uh, oh yeah, I'm already the owner on this. Um, 
I could change the owner. I could add co-owners. Um, and the assignees are, this is actually automatically added. Eric is automatically added because he is the owner of that assembly itself. So that's why he's automatically added, but I could search and find somebody else. I could assign it to myself right there, but I'm gonna leave it for Eric. And yeah, this, the, now we just have this attachment here that that's the 3D markup we just created. And then this other option down here, um, which is, uh, it's another option that I can just check this if I wanted to give Eric the option to approve or reject the issue. So if I wasn't sure if it was an issue and I was like, hey, Eric, can you investigate a little bit? I'm not sure if it's an issue, but just let me know if it is or not. I would check that and let him ha and give him the option to accept or reject the issue. Oh, are you going to are you going to check that box for me? then? <laughs> Wouldn't you like that, Eric? No, uh, I know that this is an issue, so you're oh, not going to okay. get that option. You, you got to make some changes here. All right. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that unchecked for now and then I'm going to click start so I can uh, have it send a nice notification to you and I can get back to work on the things that I was working on uh, myself. So I want to see how Eric handles this, but I also want to see um, how we're doing in the chat. See if there's any more any more questions or, or comments in there. Let's see. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we got a question from uh, Janie J. The object is a robot hand. Uh, it's the Hamaltro Rescue Spreader. So it is the, the jaws of life and basically those two arms. You, you uh, from the closed position, you can put it into like a small crevice where something is damaged or like, especially car doors, like they'll kind of jam it in there. And then, uh, John, you said it's hydraulic, right? It's yeah, hydraulic it's pressure. Yeah, hydraulically actually. Yeah, that know. drives, um, that, uh, that drives the rod, you know, the rod end that John just made that, the rod end is, that's just, well, it's quite literally the end of the rod that's being driven. And as that rod is driven, it opens up those two arms to then, you know, hopefully get somebody out with an of extreme might i might add it is extreme it might. Is, yeah it is so powerful oh yeah uh, you know enough to as gian said earlier in the demo to to um really open up like crushed metal from like car accidents and stuff when like doors are impacted and stuff like that so yeah yeah, yeah. great question <laughs> Got another great comment here from Eric. Uh, Gian and John, email is so 20th century. Use the platform. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. Hey, it's, it's not. I mean, it's, we do save a little bit of time. And I mean, you know, Gian, I, I got to say, I mean, you know, if Eric had gotten that and a notification on the platform, I... <laughs> You know, I don't think we would be in this situation right now making the change. But luckily, you know, it's not even that hard to make this change. But, I, you know, let's just I think we're good on questions, right? Let's see yeah. how. Yeah, let's keep it going. Let's see how Eric is going to make this change that yeah. Megan uh, is asking of him now. Yeah, let's let's see how just how good your modeling skills are, Eric. Yeah, we'll put those to the test. So Eric's now. Working on a completely different... I mean, you saw how busy Eric's schedule yeah. was. He had a lot of tasks. A lot he, of tasks. Guy. He's in a completely different thing. He's actually on... He's working in X-Design right now, which is completely cloud-based. And this is just a little something-something, you know, he just whipped up. But, you know, nothing... No, no big deal. But <laughs> he sees the uh, the issue, and he and he gets access... Um, or, he, sorry, he gets a notification right away that yeah, he can like click he on. Two. The reason why there's two... Yeah, why is that, Eric? Yeah, it's because Eric's also the owner on the model itself. So that's why he would get. So if you were the owner oh. of the actual um, the product or the physical product itself, then you'll get an extra notification. But he just so happens to one the one to be also managing this issue. So that's why he gets so that two. that makes sense. So it seems like so if you're the owner of a model, you want to know when issues are arisen on that. Right. But you also want to get a notification if, if like if the issue is assigned to you. So he gets right. one because he's assigned and then one because he's the owner then, right? Exactly. Okay. You are exactly I, right. I see now. Yeah. So Eric's going to click on this notification because, I mean, he just can't fathom that he made any sort of mistake. He's just like, what? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. And when he does this, this launches issue management. And... Eric could simply continue to work from, you know, just this launched app right here, but he can also has the option to pin this to his dashboard. And that is really if 
in in the future, I guess, if somebody else sends him a notification, he could simply just pin this dashboard and then he can come back to it later. So this opens up a dialog box where Eric is now going to select which tab he'd like it to be on, which makes sense that he adds it to the issue management tab. So obviously you could see all of his issues. He's pretty he's pretty on top of his stuff, so he's only got one issue in there. And he knows he's going to need to do some work on this, so he could just move it in work. And this this gives a notification to Megan that you know, it acknowledges the fact that he has received that notification and it and it gives Megan a notification letting her know that he actually started working on it. So we can also explore the attachments here because he, he's still looking for he's still looking for more details. And he actually sees that this is the markup that Megan just made. So he can launch this again without having to explore or search for any apps. He launches this right away. And it's as if they were together because this is the exact view that Megan was looking at. And if he wanted to be 100% certain, he can view this in a PowerPoint view so oh, it's nice. or presentation mode. So uh, it's Sweet. kind of like a PowerPoint, right? Slideshow yeah. where he's just can move back and forth between both of them. So he needs to make that 33. And oh, he needs to change this to fill it. There's really no room for interpret, uh, misinterpretation here. He, he he won't make this mistake again um, now because, you know, Megan let him know on the 3D Experience platform. So right from within here, he can actually see the items that this is reported against. So he'll launch this data right from here. Because remember, he's now working on the platform. He's no longer working in 3D Experience SolidWorks, but he can launch 3D Experience Sol SolidWorks right from the platform. So we'll just kind of fade to the there and we can hide our yoke again. And we can actually just edit the component that needs to be edited right in context of the right in context of the assembly. It's just as simple as adding or changing one dimension and in the same um, you know little window here we can also change those from chamfers to fillets. He's done with this one, but what about the inner wall that houses that shaft, the other component? Well, we got to edit that too. So it's pretty easy to do that as well. And it's just a matter again of changing a sketch dimension. Wow. You're making this look a little too easy. Yeah, Eric, I mean, you know? there's really no design challenge that <laughs> anybody's gonna throw at me and, you know, I mean, if I knew it'd be this easy, I would have pointed out a lot more stuff I didn't like, but... Yeah, oh, oh, all right. <laughs> well, maybe that'll be a, no, sorry, another one. Megan is. Not me, not me. Yeah. I've never Oh, that. Megan, Megan, of course, <laughs> of course. It's just Megan. So, yeah, he toggles that back to the display state, and again, he can give this a save. And once he saves this... It's got to it's got to save all of the configurations and everything. Um, so all the configurations of the bolt and everything, it's going to save up to the cloud. Right. There's the Open Jaws configuration that he has. Nice. So once that's entirely saved, again, this is going to be now updated absolutely everywhere. So for example, when he goes back into Issue Management and launches from his favorites, Issue Management, and Megan goes to look at his work, she can open up the model, again, an updated model right from within issue management if she wanted to, and everything is up to date. So he doesn't need to reattach anything. That's wow, exactly so what he's gonna do. He's gonna launch the platform again. Wow, so it looks like it's really easy for you to just like jump between like desktop and the browser, huh? Like, yeah. Seems yeah, it's simple. really easy to jump between desktop and the browser. And, you know, if you have two monitors, too, it makes it really, really simple. <laughs> yeah, and, I bet. you know, all that's left for Eric to do is just open up um, and, you know, issue management and move this into an approval. Right. He can't move it into completed because Megan's got to complete, right. complete the issue. Right, she's got to approve it, right? Yeah. Yeah, right, but I can, I can let Megan know now that I've completed the changes that she's asked me to make. And, you know, I'd say it's an urgent notification. You know, I'd say I did that in a pretty urgent manner. 
Yeah, so. I, I'd say so. And the, the great thing, one of the things I love about this too, is that say you weren't able to put it in approval, like you ran into some issues, you could just like comment right on the issue, right? Yeah. Like, and just communicate with Megan through that. Exactly. There are so many different ways to communicate. It just really makes it easy to, um, you know, and it also makes it really hard not like to, to mess things up. Like, you know, we're not worrying about um, like, you know, managing a bunch of different email threads. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think at this point, the ball is kind of in yeah, uh, Megan's court. Definitely back so in Megan's court. But I before think we see... Before we see her, uh, what she's going to do with this, I do want to check the chat quickly. Oh, that's a cool comment. Okay. JP Emmanuel, thank you for, for putting this in here. He said the cool thing about the Hamaltro is that it uses mineral oil rather than hydraulic fluid, Oh, which is pretty crazy. And he said, which is hazmat. So that's it's interesting that they'd use such a hazardous material in wow. saving someone's life but i'm sure wow, there must be something some new i mean that's cool i think it. we'll have to research a little bit more about that thanks jp yeah yeah and oh and eric eric uh talk uh, just discussions going on in the uh discussions going on in the chat thanks eric for letting everyone know that we've been using this homaltro spreader as as a data set for for almost 20 years now almost 20 years <laughs> yeah wow. i thought it was just around 10 but wow. i stand corrected oh, wow. <laughs> yeah that's like uh what you and i maybe three or four then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um let's see you see any other questions john i'm just pulling it up on uh on my iPad over here. Love yeah, I'm also um, pulling it up. Let's see. It looks like we had one about uh, 3D experience for students. And uh, thank you to our helpers on the back end who, who answered that question. There is a link that they that they put in the chat for for um, Drew Meal. Drew Mill, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but you asked a question about how 3D experience is useful for students. So definitely check out that link. Um, there are quite a lot of options uh, for students and now makers as well. Excellent. Well, you know, Gian, I'm absolutely dying to know what Megan has to say now. I mean, she has to be happy with this. One. I know, especially if Eric Beatty is in, in the chat is saying so many design changes. <laughs> is it Megan Manager or Megan Medler? <laughs> 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 Wow, I'm glad we have so many comedians on our stream right now, actually <laughs> making us laugh. Uh, yeah, I guess you could call her Megan Medler in this in this situation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's see let's see what Megan Medler comes up with now. Let's see what she thinks. <laughs> All right, so we're back on the iPads still. I see the uh, issue notification come up that Eric put that in approval. So I just clicked it, and I was actually already in issue management. Um, so you can see some of the other issues I had going on here, but I'm just clicking to the 3D markup. Um, and then as I click on, I get this little this little option here and I want to just, I'm gonna click the open one so that I can open up this 3D markup. And since I didn't expect uh, Eric to make a new revision, then I, I should see it update instantly here, which which I can confirm now with, uh, with using the dimension tool, that's 33 millimeters again, which is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted to see. And I can even customize how that dimension looks so that if we want to review later, I can see I'm going to highlight it in this green color so I can say, OK, yeah, Eric did his job. He he changed it to 33. So we're good. I'm going to make sure that's green. And yeah, let's just see. Did he change the fillets now, though? I know that was kind of a nitpicky uh, request, but let's see. Let's see if he did it. Oh, wow, he did. Look at that beautiful curvature there. Who doesn't love a nice fillet? So yeah, that looks good. I'm just gonna I'm gonna approve this now. So I'm gonna put the X on my 3D markup tool, go back to my issue management, and then all I have to do is hit completed. That's literally all there is to it. And now that that issue is complete. But like I said before, we could go back and forth on these issues. Um, we could comment on them and provide more attachments, more files, like more documentation as the issues that you face get more and more complex. Um, and from this view, so you might've noticed before, Eric only had one issue that he was looking at, but Megan's got five here, five ongoing issues. And that's because you can customize the view of your issues. So Eric only sees issues that are, um, that are assigned to him 
uh, or that are like, you know, on a model that he owns. Whereas Megan wants to see all of the issues uh, that she is the owner on, that she is the assignee on, and she's the one kind of doling out a lot of these issues. So she has a lot more of these ongoing, and this is a great view for her to just easily see, you know, what are the issues, what are the ongoing issues and, and, and what state are they in right now? So with that, uh, I think that I think we pretty much showed how issue management can really help uh, streamline some of that collaboration for you and, and make it easier to communicate and work with the same design data to, to end with your with the finished product that you're really looking for. So with that, uh, John, when, when you're whenever you're ready, I, I think that we can start to wrap things up, uh, maybe give a little high level overview of, of what we saw today. Absolutely. I mean, we do have one more question in the chat here. So this is a question for Megan Manager. So Megan never has to open the model in SolidWorks to do all the review work. Is that correct? I mean, Megan, did you did you ever get into Solid? Did you have to jump into SolidWorks at all? Yeah, no, I never had to jump into because I don't. I mean, come on, John. I'm, I'm the manager. I don't. <laughs> I don't get in CAD. That's what you're for. The engineers who love CAD. I love just being able to play with cool models tell you what's wrong with it but i don't actually have to get my hands on it yeah that's so exactly that's right so such a it's it's very handy and it makes sense because why would i as a manager why would i even want to bother occupying a cad license if i don't really have a need to especially if now i can see all the data and mark it all up and document issues without having to go inside just saves me time and money there i don't have to buy an extra product absolutely i couldn't agree more i mean so i know we covered a lot in that session. So let's do a quick recap and let's explore what we actually covered because it was a ton of stuff today. Yeah, lots of design in the beginning, but. Uh... Yeah, exactly. So for starters with Collaborative Industry Innovator, so we saw how we're able to store and manage design data seamlessly in the cloud. So acting, acting as kind of like a backbone um, and helping out Eric Engineer store all of his data so he could focus in on his design. Whereas Megan Manager was able to use a lot of the tools to analyze designs and document issues um, and do a lot of the managerial tasks that she needs to do and a lot of the tools that help her simply manage the team. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, you could expect to get this same workflow if you have 3D Experience SolidWorks, but also, if you have um, Collaborative Designer for SolidWorks, um, you could also get the same workflow um, with, you know, a, a SolidWorks desktop license. But, so, John, can we just, what's the difference between those again? Just one more time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the difference between Collaborative Designer for SolidWorks is for those who already have pre-existing data for SolidWorks, that will be a better solution for them. Whereas if you're just starting out, um, maybe a new company or something like that, you would find maybe 3D Experience SolidWorks would be better off for you. And the best part is that all Collaborative Industry Innovator, um, so all the tools that we use today are included with both of these. So you could get started right away. You don't have to, you know, there's, there's, very little learning curve with all of those tools. Um, but if you'd like to learn more, you can click the link in the description. And before we send you on your way, we do want to give a special thanks to Sarah Zuckerman and Brad Williamson. I mean, they have been superstars behind the scenes for us, helping um, us communicate with you and helping everything run smooth on the live stream. So um, yeah, we can't thank you guys too. enough. And uh, for all of you out there, tune in again April 1st, 2021, where we'll have a special guest, Jordan Tadich. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but that's not his actual hand, Gian. Oh, so wow. that'll be uh, it almost... maybe a little bit of foreshadowing of what we'll be covering next time, but definitely get our hands on some 3D sculptors. So be 3D sure to sculptor. join us on April 1st. And again, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we can't wait to see you again April 1st. Yeah. Have a great day, everyone. See you soon.